Hello, 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 hello. Let's get down to the business. Hold on one second, sir. Okay, load, 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 load. Estimate. I just need to get one Instagram photo up. Hey, Esme, I need your help. Esme, that wasn't a good photo. My fourth reading in a row. I'm on Fuego. Well, I just did a mini reading. All right. All right, all right, all right. Here we are. Let's make sure the Wi Fi is good. Okay. So. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, actually, Esme, I need you to look at this chart and tell me... Ah, come here, you cat. Tell me what I need to look at, Esme. Esme, look at the chart. Stop doing this thing. Oh, my God. Chiron. Thanks, Esme. Okay, let's play with Esme. So... Okay, oh, Chiron and Gemini. Interesting. Esme. So... We have here the Leo ascendant. Woo, Mars right on the ascendant. Damn. Bro. Um, with the Sun and Venus. So a nice first house Leo human. And I'm actually gonna turn my camera off because I feel like closing my eyes and meditating. And I feel weird when I'm like with my eyes closed and stuff. But I'll pop it back on. Um, all right, so I see no air in the chart, so that's that's a lot of Scorpio. Ooh, look at that moon and Scorpio. What aspect? Okay, just square Mars, Sun square Pluto, Venus square Pluto. Yeah, Sun and Venus are together. Is Mars square Pluto? No. Well, Pluto's seven, seventeen, yeah, just outside sending. And then okay, Mars has all those. Okay, so we got some Pluto stuff going on, but that's kind of the main aspects. And you got moon square ascendant. I right, got you, got you, got you. So, um first of all, North Node, the destiny mark. Wait, actually hold up a moment. I feel like there's some notes I was supposed to look at. No, there wasn't. Good, good, good. I would have written, I always write down if I need to check the Instagram combo or whatever. So. All right. So, okay. So we have a lot of different types of energies. Let's go with Mercury square. Okay. So, interesting. So it's a black moon lower than 12. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, first of all, you have your sun square moon. Um, basically, uh, Sun and Leo, Moon and Scorpio, 
very, very different. Um, obviously, Leo is about self-expression. It's a fire sign. It is, you know, it's just very much, uh, it's it, the goals of Leo and, you know, the fact that you have so much Leo, it's very different than that of Scorpio. Um, Scorpio is about, you know, a Scorpio moon individual is very resourceful, but very emotionally intense. There can be some, you know, they're extremely sensitive, right? Extremely sensitive. Am I sh not sharing? Extremely sensitive. Um, and the fact that you're a Leo rising and Leo sun can pose a problem. Why, Jesse? Why? Well, your ascendant is how you essentially present yourself, right? It's like the vehicle through which you navigate life. And your moon and is the you know the emotional undercurrent it's like an egg the ascendant is the shell what people see the white is the sun it's your identity who you are and then the yoke what runs the show beneath the surface is the moon the luna so i think i'm gonna actually set my microphone up i haven't been doing it but Okay, just do a quick check, 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 check. Do you hear me from here, from here, from here, from here, from here? A little bit loud. Check, 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 check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Okay, we're good. So yeah, anyways, um, it's just very, very different energy. Um, so the way you come off Leo Rising, um, it, you know, it makes the sun rule your chart, and the sun is is rising, or it's it's right behind the ascendant. So you know, there, there's, there, there's, there's definitely some, some, some difficulty there. Um, because the way that people see you, right. Um, the way people see you is going to be very at odds with your emotional nature. So people might see this, you know, this, this, this fun kind of carefree Leo, but then, um, and it's not that you're not that, but um, on an emotional level, a deep kind of a deep underpinning, it's Scorpio, right? And they, they, like I said, it could not be any different or like they could not be more different. So, um you know that 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 could bring up some problems because you know you may like i said you 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 may you may present in that in that uh, i almost want to say like festive like you know very leo way um and then that's you know also who you are like identity wise but then underneath the surface is a scorpio so people because the moon is not something it's a yoke it's not it's the you know it's beneath the surface is not what people can see. Um, people can be very surprised once they get to know you of this, this depth that you have, you know, this real, real soul, deep, deep soul that, that wants to go beneath the surface and, you know, get to the underpinnings of, of understanding the human psyche and understanding the underground of the world and the taboo someone who, you know, on the surface might not seem like, you know, they could be, you know, a Leo 
like let's say if you were a Leo Moon too, right? Like yeah, it's still sensitive, but nothing compared to Scorpio. So, um, you know, it can it can it can it can cause like some types of issues, right? Because people, you know, like it can, it can make one feel very misunderstood. Um, now, of course, when you have Sun Square Moon, right? It, it a lot of the times, not always, it, it speaks to uh, divorced parents. Not always. Um, oftentimes, it speaks to very different messaging received from parent A compared to from parent B. Um, so the key when you have sun square moon, right? Regardless of you know whether the parents are still together or not, is to understand that your path is different than both of theirs. You take you know what you need to from both, but you're here to blaze your own path. You have Neptune square the nose. Interesting. So, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a big a big thing. Um, so as a Scorpio moon. People with Scorpio Moon, you know, they they can have very extreme moods, right? Um, they can really swing back and forth. So there's there's really this need for Scorpio Moon Moon people, and because they're so sensitive, they you know, and there's this this very like no repressing type energy, right? So Esme, stop any my wires, please. Thank you. Esme, stop. These aren't toys. Um, you know, it's like the question becomes, how do you get these two to work together? Because I always give the metaphor of if you are a ship and there's two captains to the ship that is you, the yin and the yang, uh, the yin being the moon, the yang being the sun, they're both going in different directions, right? And a lot of people who have sun officer, sun square moon, you know, they can you know, there's that need to feed both mouths, right? You have to feed both mouths. How do you feed both? How, how do you feed the Leo and how do you feed the, the you know, so the, the Scorpio is a lot more obviously introverted. Um, it needs to be able to, to it can't, it doesn't want to repress itself. You know, it wants to be able to say whatever it wants to say around anyone, anyone close to it. So Scorpio moons tend to be very private people and Leo is not a private sign, right? Um, opposite. So, you know, there, there, there is that need to be able to, um, to kind of have fun and express yourself because at the core of Leo is the inner child. So when I see people who have a lot of Leo in their chart, I think, okay, this person is definitely, you know, with your North node in Aries, right. And South node in, in, in Libra, right. Uh, I'm not sure how much, you know, astrology, but as a karmic astrologer, I, I focus a lot on the South and North node. The south node represents the karmic tendency, right? This this right here, the been there, done that. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, imagine you've mastered an energy in past lives. And now you're like, all right, um, like, you know, what energy do I need to master in this life that I haven't mastered before? The mount, It's almost like the metaphoric mountain never climbed in past lives, right? So, you know, going from Libra to Aries um is really about going from the potential for codependence right the potential for having put too much too many of your by by having allowed potentially relationships to um to kind of i guess define you too much and, and because it's the third house um kind of keep you away from higher wisdom and knowledge so now with the, the North, North Known Aries, it's all about independence. It's all about being the captain of your own ship. Does that mean you're not allowed, you should, that you're not ever going to get in relationships? You're not supposed to be in relationships? Hell no. But it does mean that, um, you know, that there's a need to be very, to, to, to pick very carefully of, of who you get in the relationships with, right? Um 
So, you know, one, one really good way to, to gauge it. Well, of course, having the sun square moon, it's, you know, like what can happen relationship wise is that there might be someone, let's say who really, really covers you on, on, um, on like the Scorpio side, right? Let's say that they have all of this depth. Um, you know, you feel like you can really express your emotions around them, but then they're not fun. They're not in touch with their inner child. They're too serious. You, the Leo part of you is the fun part. It's the part that, that wants to be a forever kid, right? Not on, a, on any immature level, but you know, the whole essence of Leo is authentic self-expression. So what I mean by that is, let's say, as a creator, not creating for views and for external validation, the creator of your life, right? It's really through creative outlets, um, being able to really, really authentically find yourself, right? So if you think about Scorpio as the real energy, the realist energy, right? Because Scorpio does not repress Scorpio is about shadow work. It's about death, rebirth, transformation. So it's about surrender. It's about allowing, you know, it's about going into that darkest parts of our soul. And that's why a lot of Scorpio moons, you know, sometimes they had like a, you know, sometimes they were, they were born when their, their mothers were like stressed out. I've heard Scorpio moons whose mothers literally like admitted, like admittedly, like they, their mothers did not want them. It was like a mistake. Um, you know, obviously that's not how it is for everyone, but like, um, you know, there, there's an intensity there, right? So when it comes to, you know, when it comes to, to that, to that combo, um, with all, with that, you know, the stellium in Leo, four of your big six are in Leo, right? So clearly in past lives, you know, with their South and Libra, one thing about South and Libra is that it can acquiesce and and be very indecisive, and um, because of that, not un, not get to know itself, right? Because it can um, sometimes be too much like letting the other person decide, or you know, just like um, you know, not not want not like people pleasing, not wanting to rock the ship very much. So you know, they might. Um, yeah, they might, they might do things that, you know, they might do things that just to make other people happy, right? But it doesn't really make themselves happy. But Scorpio is so, so real, you know? It's so, so real. It does not repress shit. Um, so part of the, the, the issue with that could be that in life, you know, you're not going to make everyone happy. And that's kind of what you're, you know, it's okay to be selfish in this lifetime. And I, I say, I, I say that a good amount when I see charts like this, because, you know, as you know, you know, most, most of my clients are empaths I've noticed. Right. Um, and, you know, it's just really important in this lifetime, like, like self-definition, you know, self-definition that comes through experience of independence. So the way Leo works with Sag is Leo says, I want to, you know, be my own creator. I want to be my, you know, the creator, of my, the, the creator of my destiny. I don't want to do the Leo South, the, the Libra South note thing, excuse me. Um, I want to do the Aries thing. So North, so so yeah, the way they 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 come together is is understanding that there's going to be a part of you that needs to kind of retreat from people and and have alone time and and just kind of be in your own energy and your own bubble and kind of regain like that and that privacy. But then there's another part that needs to be, you know, that 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 inner child and and connect with that and then through that connect with one's own creativity. And that's why you have so much Leo energy in this lifetime, because that's been held back in past lives, right? Um, 
So the best way forward with this is to go and you have flu on the IC like I do. So whew, that's a tough one. Um, but yeah, the way to go forward is to, um, you know, to really, to really do the deep shadow work that anyone with the Scorpio moon does. Usually there's like some crises early on in life and it's in the fourth house with Pluto. So Pluto on the IC right here, um, uh, is it square? Where the, yeah. So, you know, that by itself, um, usually creates a traumatic childhood. Right. Um, and until there's resolution around that, now you do have Jupiter on the mid heaven, which is amazing for career and for success. Um, but usually Pluto, Pluto on the IC, it makes it so like the early life experience, there is this theme of power and powerlessness. And the individual tends to go back and forth between those two. So it's of the utmost importance to understand that. And um, to understand that, you know, whatever traumas, mini traumas, whatever they are, you know, that that is literally karmic because it's meant to be and it's channeling in because pluto is the rule scorpio right so it's in you know moon the fourth house means that your early life childhood you know was super super important to you and that there's a lot that you know most likely has to that you have to potentially you know most likely get past right more dark dark kind of stuff that you have to get past um in order to fully maximize right it's like this like karmic um emotional debris per se right that one has to get past so you know one way of doing that like and this is what happens because your son's your son scores pluto too right so and also venus so I have Venus for Pluto also, so I know all about that. But basically, um, you know, with Sun square Pluto, usually that's like so. So so we already yeah, that's usually about the father. Um, and what it can do is it can create it can create, you know, uh, uh, you know, growing up feelings of like powerlessness, like I was saying, um, you know, because of one relationship. In particular, usually it's a father, the son, whoever the more dominant parent is. But you know, sometimes, sometimes what I've noticed is that it's not. It, it's just. It's just an energy. You know, I've just had too many clients who. One second. yeah so um you know there's definitely an energy there um that can be quite difficult um and it there's there's a lot of surrender that's needed when when you have something like that going on right um there's a lot of surrender and um you know Scorpio, you know, Scorpio energy, right? Pluto square sun, Scorpio moon, that makes you a very Plutonian person in Pluto square Venus, right? But what can happen, I, I see this go go different directions, right? Because like Pluto, sun square Pluto makes you very, very resourceful. But what can happen sometimes is that people can become like, um, if they're if they don't heal, which is why it's so important for you to follow that Scorpio moon path. They can get caught in these ego conflicts, especially in relationships, because you have Pluto square Venus also, right? So that can make it so a lot of like the 
the potential childhood trauma can come out and be projected into relationships onto the partner. I'll get into more to that one a little bit later, but um, you know, it definitely, the, the sun square Pluto just, yeah, it can, it can create, you know, ego conflicts and um, yeah, that, 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 like that feeling of like uh, agitation coming up when one's not feeling like they're in control and um, it can make, relationships just like this battleground you know until that heal that deep soul healing and that's why you see how it all is like aligned right it's like there's that energy right there's that there's that pluto on the ic which is karmic so that means that like the parents that you have in this lifetime were your parents for a reason and i read some beautiful texts lately speaking about how sometimes souls that love us incarnate as sacrifices right in a sacrificial way to be agents of change in our life even if they are the bad guy and we have a bad relationship in this lifetime with them so you see how pluto on the ic creates whatever circumstances there were early on which then you know forces this scorpio in the year scorpio moon so it makes one probably early on in life have to really like either like push, push away. And that can lead to like all kinds of power struggles and relationship, all kinds of internal crises, the journeys to the underworld. That's a good one. Right. Um, where you really see the, uh, the darker side of life until that transformation, that real letting go and surrender comes. Um, so like, it can be really difficult for people with sense where Pluto to truly lose control. I know some who have done this successfully, mostly guys, men I've seen with this who aren't spiritual have this, like, um, obviously not all of them, but I've definitely seen like major control freaks, um, who are just like power hungry. Right. I'm not saying that's you. I'm just saying that like it's for the point of this is that the transformation, the death rebirth transformation, letting go, um, going deep into your own shadow, you know, um, getting into the occult. Sometimes people just go through addiction, right? Um, but all of all of that journey, and that's why I always say do not have shame when you have these types of tough aspects because everything that happened is meant to happen, right? And there's that big need, like I said, to sacrifice, 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 sacrifice that need for control. Um, and that's when the rebirth comes, right? And there's a lot of suffering that can come up with the sun square Pluto. Um, but one of the best things about it is that it, with that sun square moon, whew, you powerhouse, especially with Jupiter on your midheaven. That's a chart of a very successful person. But of course, you know, these, these aspects take time to work. So some people with this, it might be after their Saturn return around 30, 31, that they really start to feel their success. You know, it's different for everyone. But um, yeah, being able to cha challenge this real Scorpionic, Plutonian intensity and determination into hard work and finding a work that work slash Dharma, you know, what you do with your time, that really, really, really gets you in touch, right? That's why Plutonians are such good psychologists or therapists or coaches or whatever, right? Um, but it makes someone very, very, very intelligent when it comes to understanding the human psyche. So the fact that this is all first house energy with Leo, right? It's very, very, that's Aries, first house. So that would give someone a very strong identity. Um, so, you know, um, there definitely is that sort of need for, you know, for that true letting go, right? Um, that true letting go. And it's not easy. It's so much easier said than done. The whole idea of death, rebirth, transformation. I talk about this a lot. Like it's so much easier said than done, right? 
like those three words are just like okay cool how the fuck do i do it <laughs> um so you know when i look at the chart i'm like all right it, a lot of it has to do with going into the past um going into the past and really you know being honest with what it represents um that is you know the key and like anything from regression work to, you know, any, 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 anything like that. But like the whole point is that I feel like as a healer, um, as a healer, you are meant. And when I say healer, oh, I say this for every client. Like it doesn't mean you're meant to be this, like that doesn't, like I believe when I say healer, someone who is capable of he who's healed themselves or you know it's, it's an ongoing journey you go you know, ups and downs but who has learned a lot through their own healing journey that they can pass on to other people even if it's their kids friends whatever making the world you heal yourself you're able to help other people regardless of whether you do it for your you know your job or not right so i just want to make that very clear um but yeah, all this first house Leo energy is super fascinating because, you know, you have Mars rising, like exact degree. I I can't think of of of, of when I've seen that. Um, so, you know, when you have that, it definitely creates something. Um, it creates a very assertive person, someone who's able to go out and get what they want, ask for what they want. And, um, you know, with, with the fact that, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's like where, where you want that energy, right? That's where you want, um, you know, you want your Mars rising hundred percent. And, um, you know, and then the sun and, and, and Venus are not far behind, but, you know, it just creates a lot of energy. So once again, Mars rising, people definitely need to work out, you know, and, and as a Scorpio moon, there, there can be that tension that's so, un, that, that's kind of hidden and unconscious and you have moon square Mars. I am telling you something where you're able to sweat like a physical outlet and literally your vertex is the six, like, you know, you would benefit so much from that if you don't have that already, but um, I don't know. I'm not going to guess if you do. Like, it's so hard to guess. Um, but another cool thing about that is that there's that real drive to express your individuality. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you have Leo, a Leo rising, um, if you, when you have a Leo, Leo Mars rising, um, it can, it can, it can, you know, that that fiery energy can come on a little bit strong for some people at times, right? So there is that need to learn how to kind of, you know, make make the message, um, I guess, not so intense. Like, yeah, it, not not to where it's like, not, um, you know, for your greater interest, right? When it's like having a negative effect, that's um, that's not good. But, you know, also with, you know, there, there's a certain bluntness and a certain daredevilness that comes from that, right? So I think when you have that much fire energy in your first, there's that need to kind of, that need to kind of like really, um, you know, really feel into like decisions, you know, before, before you make them. Um, but it's a complete go-getter energy, like complete go-getter energy. And, um, you know, having the sun seven degrees behind the ascendant, you know, in Placis, that would be a 12th house sun and Venus as well. But in a whole sign, what I use, it's first. So I'll talk about both. But either way, you know, your life is, you know, like karma is playing a massive role in your life. And, um, it's in these dark spiritual realms, you know, 
um, the esoteric, uh, anything that goes really beneath the surface, that's where you truly find yourself, right? And um, on the subject, you know, but like Leo, like a first, you know, the sun, it's seven degrees from the ascendant, you know, you're born 6.31 a.m., so, you know, right before sunset. Um, you know, there is that energy, too, just really wanting to, you know, really needing to make your own way in this world. And, like, once again, with all that Lee in the first house, um, you just have to think, like, I'm telling you, your south node is Libra. That is the ultimate south node. Third house, it, it represents, like, because of relationships and past lives, um, it took it, it held you back from experiencing the full, 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 um, you know, like essence of your independence, right? The full essence of your independence. So, um, you know, it's important to to know that. Okay. So, 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 that, so then like, you know, Venus being where it is, um, that to me is a surefire sign that your relationships are very, very karmic. Um, very karmic indeed. And, um, you know, the right ones, like there'll be some relationship like the, but like the more, you know, with 12th house energy, the more it, it, it like the, the cheat code for that is to be of service, you know, to have a life, a life where you are of service. Like I have met countless people, especially in actually one in particular that has a very similar chart to me that I just think of her life was like, what, what can happen when you have a lot of 12th house is that it can be the house of repressed energies. Right. And when you have Pluto on the IC that could, like I said, speak to like deep karma or trauma in childhood or very volcanic early home environment that, you know, um, until that gets resolved, it can, you know, affect the career and the, the, the outer world progress in a negative way. So, you know, very, very key is understanding that and knowing that, you know, Venus is also scoring Pluto, as I said, right? So when Venus scores Pluto, that can literally be about self-hate, right? But before I get into that, let me just finish my spiel about, about the 12th house being the house of repressed energies. Um, when you are someone who says, I am going to really, really, you know, be of service, follow my karmic journey, do things for the greater good. Um, so with this individual, right, she, her life was just like, cause it, it can make, it can make it like it can make the life feel like it's just like a cycle of meaninglessness at times, right? If life, if, you know, cause the life is really ruled by karma and a good amount of fate, not that everything's fated. I'm just saying that there's, there's a good amount of, there's a certain direction you're, you're meant to be going, right? Of course, it's towards that, that independence, towards that higher learning, towards that real understanding of truth. And we'll talk about, you know, the fact that Neptune squares this in a sec, um, and what that means for, for your karma and, and, and how I see the chart. But, um, you know, when we look at this here, we see that um, these energies can either be really strong or they can be weakened. Because when you grow up with 12th house energies, they're weaker energies in the immediate environment. And a lot of times they can get shut down. So there's a real need, a real bravery that's needed to go in and reclaim these energies. Um. With respect to Venus, um, you know, and Sun both, you know, from the 12th and Placis squaring Pluto, a big part of your life purpose is going back into the past, into whatever trauma, mini trauma, whatever it is, and acceptance and, and really, really forgiveness for whatever, you know, happened, right? We, you know, the, the, the thing with resentments is that we hold resentments and we think that it's like drinking poison and thinking someone else is going to get sick from it, right? So, you know, it, it's it's about energetic lightness. So when we hold resentments towards people, even towards ourselves, right? And the Scorpio moons can be very hard on themselves at times, right? Um, and a lot of it can be unconscious. That 
is extra weight on our spiritual bodies that um, make it so, you know, we're not necessarily allowed to bring on new stuff. Now, I always have to say, you, everything I'm saying here is a, a potential, you know, I would, I would read this the same if you're 20, 25, whatever. So you could have done a lot of work. I would imagine you've done a lot of work on all these themes, right? This is the birthmark, birth chart. This is the, the blueprint, right? So it's really in the follow-up session, and uh, hopefully you add the current astrology as well, that we really dive, well, in the follow-up, we dive into comparing your lived experience with, um, you know, everything in the, in the in, in, that I'm saying, with knowing nothing about you, no picture, nothing. I, I make sure to, I never look at anything about any clients. So, well, before, after I will. But um, yeah, so overall, you know, we, we have here a chart where, um, you know, where you are really, really, really a lot of surrender is needed and a lot of authentic self-expression diving into your authentic creativity. Um, so what can happen though, and there's a need to like, yeah, really, really assimilate like a, a very strong identity that's not based on ego, but it's based on, you know, that real authentic self-expression, right? Oops. So, um, yeah, the more, you know, the more creative outlets or, you know, any creative outlet you can have, that's going to be a game changer for you. Any travels you can go on any cultural cultures you can embed yourself in any, you know, anything like you're interested in like astrology or, or anything, uh, human design or, you know, psychology or whatever, you know, it could be anything. Um, but yeah, with, like I said, with that girl, her whole life changed, like flipped around once she started becoming spiritual and so like she quit her, her, you know, moneymaker day job, but you know, she went to India and, She's just completely changed everything about herself. And now she's just very happy and her whole energy is so much lighter. That's really fascinating. So, you know, when we see here, um, you know, the, the square, right, with with Venus and, and, and Pluto, the one that we both have, that makes it so until it, it can it can be related to, to self-hate. And until a certain, you know, like what, what, what happens a lot with that is that, um, you know, they're, they're like uh, a lot, a lot of times there's like a certain, the, the person can sometimes feel a certain level of abandonment. Um, not always, but you know, that that's, that's definitely something that, that comes up a good amount when I, when I, when I look at that aspect and um, yeah, it's just like, it's a tough one. And did my camera just turn off? No. Basically, like people who have Venus square Pluto, like in like when like when like when they haven't dealt with the kind of underlying psychological issues, they can very easily like throw too much at their partner, and and it can just be like too much, too fast, putting them on a pedestal, trying to find God and their partner. At the same time, also a very common thing I've seen with this is that because Pluto represents the underworld, the darkness, if they haven't healed those parts of themselves, they tend to go after very dark partners. Um, it's only once they, you know, really learn to value and, and love themselves, that self love piece that um, things kind of change. Right. But yeah, I've, I've heard some, and had some crazy stories in that respect. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, yeah, I think I think with that aspect, um, 
I've just seen so many ugly things happen. And what happened, you know, the core of it is when, when the stuff from the childhood is unresolved, right? This, this whole house right here, people have relationships that mimic who have Venus square Pluto that mimic this Pluto IC. So it's annoying, right? But it's like, and, 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 you know, perhaps you've, you've gotten past this, right? It's usually, I think from my experience, most people like around your age have, have gotten past this, but there can always be inklings, you know? But what can what can happen is like our struggles and relationships, manipulation, this this deep fear of being abandoned, this deep fear of not being worthy enough that um you know go to extraordinary links to keep that person, quote unquote, you know, per se. So um yeah, it, it's not it, it it can really lead to some ugly situations. Um but yeah, like as you as you can imagine, like once someone with that aspect, you know, really values themselves, then it changes everything. So the fact that, you know, and once again, I'll say it again, like, you know, you'll have tests in this lifetime. And you've had tests, you will, or, you know, I don't know if you maybe you're married now. I have no idea, but like th there's tests with that, with that and with the 12th house nature of, you know, past life people coming in and, um, you know, really, you know, like, like just like very, very karmic relationships and, and not all of them are meant to be good. You know, not all of them are meant to, yeah, to really like, like some of them are meant to stir things up and, you know, yeah. Like one, like I said, like once, once that real value of self is there, the individual knows what they deserve, knows what they, you know, what they're kind of, you know, they're not interested in anymore. And then they develop the strong boundaries needed. And they know, okay, like, what the fuck? And then they think, like, what the fuck? Like, how how did I ever, how was I ever like that? And trust me, I have those experiences. Like, I was like that. Um, and sometimes it just takes that one really solid relationship. And for a Scorpio moon, you know, like I said, there needs to be that full disclosure. Um, that, you know, that ability to just talk about whatever subject you know however dark it is you know to not have to hide anything just pure loyalty scorpio moons um can be the most loyal people right but they need it back and if if, if you mess with them you know you won't be happy <laughs> let's just say that so kind of more on the relationship tip well actually yeah I mean, it just goes with what I'm saying, like your Juno, which represents kind of your, you know, your ideal partner and like a, like a marriage type scenario is Pisces. It's, it's in Pisces eighth house. So it's very linked to someone who is deeply empathetic and, you know, Scorpio and Pisces go really, really well. Um, but someone who is, you know, also going through this transformation, you know, so very like spirit, spiritual relationship a, a very close you know karmic relationship um is the best right i mean i mean obviously every relationship is karmic to an extent but you know what i mean like something that's really really on an energetic level very romantic very deep potentially even dramatic you know but that's not like obviously what you're asking for but like you know something that um something that's that's not you know, that's not your everyday thing. Um, uh, like real, like spiritual union, two souls becoming one, that kind of energy, right? But then that Leo energy, it definitely needs the fun. It can't just have the really intense deep water, it has to have both. Or, you know, and I would never say you have 
this is the only sign or the, you know, like I would never say that. I think any, any two charts can, can be together. If the souls love each other, the, the, the transcend the charts, you know? So interesting. So your vertex is on your Neptune, but Neptune square nodes. So I really care about squares to the nodes because they represent skip steps. Um, so when you have Neptune square the nodes, I see very rarely there's unresolved material um, around ultimate meaning or one sense of ultimate meaning, you know, one's dreams and ideals, you know. So a lot of times people will have this, there's past lives where because you can see the third house, which is kind of like very mundane, everyday life, not really like the higher philosophy, like where your north node is trying to get you the higher philosophy, the higher truth, right? The truth you were lied to in past lives. And that and the nature of those lies, right? Um, led to like, you know, disillusionment and, and uh, loss of meaning, right? And even despair. It reminds me of like the church when they started really lying about like, if you do this, you'll go to hell, stuff like that, you know? So it, it could have led in past lives to this deep dissociation with the spirit where you're just living in like the kind of mundane everyday world. So there's other way, other things it could be. It could also represent like an unresolved dream or ideal that's been suppressed. Um, and in this life, it demands exploration. And that kind of makes sense to me. Because, um, you know, the fact that Neptune is conjunct the vertex, which is like a very faded point in the sixth, that literally could be someone like Neptune six has people like myself and, um, are people who just like, it's so fucking hard for them to do the, 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 the matrix day by day grind, whatever you want to call it, you know, just like the rat race. I don't know where it's like. They want their day-to-day -to, -day to have a profound meaning, especially the Scorpio moon, you know, and Pluto, I see, you know, it's funny because we both have this. I, okay. Oh, oh, I'm so happy I'm telling you this. I don't know where you live right now. If you still live around Tacoma, I grew up in Portland, by the way. Um, but if you still live around there, I don't know if you've ever heard of astral cartography. It's another reading I offer. Um, but you would be on a very, you would be living close to your Pluto IC line. And that is like the worst line. I swear to God, like it's life-changing astrocartography. If you, if you live, if you move to a place that is, you know, you don't have to like literally just I'm moving exactly on this line. Like, of course it matters of like how much you like the place, but like whenever I go back to San Francisco, where I was born, my mom lives like after a few weeks, I feel the most insane pressure. So, you know, when you have a difficult planet on your IC, like Pluto, Saturn, Mars, I always think it's it's probably, you know, amazing thing to live away from um, where you're born. Just putting it out there. If you ever want to get that reading, let me know. But besides that, yeah. So the fact that Neptune is in the sixth, I think that yes, like literally like some type of spiritual work or some type of real service. And with all that 12th house, like I said, it can make people feel like they're running around like a, you know, like a, a chicken without a head until they find that thing that really nurtures their soul. And your, in, in your, you know, the Scorpio moon is the transformer. It's the transmuter. It's the person that can change people, the deep psychologist, you know, the deep, you know, the person that understands the human psyche naturally, the natural, the nat natural lie detectors in them. And, you know, having part of fortune there also speaks even more of that, it backs up what I'm saying by saying that like by you having this very deep and honest transformational spiritual relationship with yourself, um, that is where you meet your greatest joy, right? Your greatest flow state comes when you're really doing this fourth house work, which involves going back time. And then that by doing this work and being true to the Scorpio moon, you know, understand that like, you know, there's going to be some days that are, you know, like just very difficult, you know, um, Scorpio moons, they just tend to go back and forth. And because you have no earth or no air, no earth makes it very, very hard to ground. So it makes it so like having a routine, right? Having a day-to-day -day routine, especially, you know, it's, 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 it's ruled by Capricorn. So that consistency, you know, and really that giving back 
that service humanity, that spiritual service humanity, that could be a life changer. And then that can allow you to really, really shine, that Leo to really, really shine. Of course, there's, you know, multiple ways. I'm not saying the only way is this. This could also be, you know, something artistic. You know, it could be something, it, it could be something part-time, right? It could be a cause. It could be studying something spiritual that you've always wanted to learn about, right? Um, and getting good at that, right? Like an esoteric thing. Um, even if you're not doing it to be professional, even if you're just doing it to just like, you know, really learn because Scorpio moons, when they get into something, they get into it, you know? So as an Aries North node, you are always trying to, do, to be independent. You are always trying to learn new things. You're always trying to be, to be the pioneer that just goes, right? And with Jupiter there, you know, when it comes to traveling, when it comes to learning and expanding yourself, you will be very, very lucky. And it's 29 degrees. So it's a very strong energy. And it's kind of at the end of the karma with it, where you're trying to turn the page on a certain level of understanding uh, when it comes to truth. So I think that the fact that's on the mid heaven is very interesting because I think that that puts a lot of karma and fate into your dharma, into your career. And I think you're meant to be a leader. And, um, you know, I think that you're meant to be someone who, you know, through the things you've learned and, and your own experience is able to, and it's not always, you know, the exact same timing for everyone. Some people are, you know, are meant to, you know, have different purposes at different times. You even have, you know, Chiron the 11th. So we'll talk about that in a second. It's when es my cat Esme looked at, but you invest in the 12th, right? So it's like, you know, it's very, very, lots of stuff. But um, besides that with the Neptune, um, you know, what else can I say? Um, you know, knowing, knowing the difference between imagine, you know, between like, um, intuition and imagination right not tricking yourself in different areas um and yeah just wondering like what could these unfulfilled dreams be and when you have the south node in libra it could be because of a, you know like let's say you had all these aspirations in the past life and you got married you know, got got had kids really early but for some reason that relationship it pushed you away from being able to you know, to really, really, really get that part of yourself going. Um, yeah, so it's like personal fantasy and objective reality, the difference between the two. And that really, you know, leads to transformation. Um, so yeah, a lot of people with that square, they feel like they've lost their spiritual way. And if they don't, you know, do something in this lifetime, they can just kind of wander in that kind of meaningless cycle of, of kind of um, despair. Some people with that, you know, can get addictions, drug addictions, or any kind of like, you know, anything similar to that. But also, you know, in rare cases, it could, it could represent some type of a psychic attack, you know, or someone who has like some, some need, needs some type of like uh, spiritual clearing. Um, but I think usually it's more, more about, um, you know, that loss of meaning and, and, uh, I, I think that can, that can definitely come from, you know, past life conditioning and, and, you know, a great lie that just kind of like, you know, led your life down a certain hole. So yeah, further on, you know, we see more creative energy, but then Saturn, it's so interesting. So as a Leo, you want to be able to create, 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 but when you have Saturn in the fifth house, it can literally feel like, um, like, um, you know, like there's this big kind of, uh, like, I always think of it as like this big, like wall that can come up in, in, in respect to your creativity. Right. So the key is to turn your fun into work with Saturn, the fifth house. Uh, it can make people, yeah, so it, this is like a big block to this Leo energy that just wants to be let out, right? But like I said, a 12th house person, the cheat code is selfless service to humanity. And Uranus in the fifth is beautiful because, and 
you know, these are all retrogrades. So it's really speaking of like, you know, this life being some type of do over, not that you were a failure in the past life or something, but like, uh, you know, when it comes to like the spiritual reality, you know, there, 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 there's just a great lie in past lives. And in this life, you know, it's beautiful that you've come to me with this reading. I, I, I'm not sure the extent of your spiritual, um, you know, interest, but let me tell you, your chart is made for it. Um, but the Uranus fifth house creativity off the chains. Um, like you're able to create from your intuition. That's what's so dope about that, right? Um, Uranus fifth house people, they just, you know, um, have very innovative, creative schemes. Um, usually like pretty unconventional hobbies. It's interesting um, that a lot of times their children can be pretty unconventional too. But yeah, the thing with Saturn the fifth is that also there's like the potential, you know, with your sun square moon of experiencing like a lack of fun early in life, right? Maybe in with your Pluto on the IC too. And um, it, it makes it difficult to kind of relax, you know? Um, so sometimes people with this, like I was saying, making your fun, your work, structuring your creative work, right? That, that, that can be a great way. And that's, that's why I've seen Saturn fifth house people really, really like take what they like to do for fun and make it their work. I'm one of them. Oh, I have it in fifth house in plastics in fifth house. So, um, yeah. Another thing about the Neptune six, it's just like a difficulty coping with everyday life, you know? Um, and just like the desire, like I said, to want to be a service. And then that, you know, exact thing being your doorway to higher awareness. So, yeah. And a lot of that, like, you know, building really solid foundations in your life linked to your true Leo self, you know? One thing with Vertex and Capricorn, visiting like magical places in the world, like the earth chakras could be like really amazing for you, especially with your, your, your ninth house Jupiter. Um, these can give you like all kinds of downloads. So that's pretty cool. Also crystals, like working with crystals because, you know, it's rock. Saturn can be really, really good for you. Different gems. And um, yeah. And yeah, also just like understanding of the chakras and just like energy work, maybe like something like Reiki could be something really amazing for you. So besides that, let's see. Um, yeah, so like the Jupiter ninth house people, that's the best place you have Jupiter. There's just that insatiable search for the meaning of life, basically, right? Like endless quests of, of, of knowledge, just like really, really like it gives you that ability to teach people too and to be a big time leader in that area you know like you go and you learn like a gypsy that learns a bunch of stuff through their you know that that and that's you fo following your north node following your higher journey the more you explore the more you make your life an adventure the more you just go now of course like i said i'll keep saying scorpio and leo different both fixed it can be very stubborn leo scorpios can be very stubborn um but they're great leaders if they're able to, you know, to trust others, right? Sometimes the Scorpio can be quite cynical, the Scorpio moon, but sometimes it's a real cynicism that, that has wor worthiness because Scorpio moons, more than anyone, they understand the, um, the lower side of humans, right? They understand what humans are capable of. And it, it's kind of like a natural cynicism, I guess I would say. So, um, also Midheaven and Taurus, like I have this too. Um, I don't really, I don't know, like, you know, Midheaven and Taurus people, like, you know, it's like, I think like it's ruled by Venus. So, you know, when we look at your Venus in, in, in Leo, which would be in the 12th and classes, like, you know, I think it's like, 
it could be some something creative, something really authentic, you know. Um, but also Taurus is about solidity and, and building foundations, like Capricorn kind of is, right? Um, but Midheaven Taurus people, they come off to like the general public, you know, let's say like on social media or um uh, come here, Mika. You know, just like if you were like a celebrity, right? Uh it's very, very trustworthy. So um Okay, Chiron time. This is what Esme looked at. So, Esme, so Chiron and Gemini is very interesting, right? Because Chiron is our womb. Um, so, Mika, come here. Give me a kiss. Mika. Okay, Mika, can you let me work, Mika? Okay, so yeah, Chiron and Gemini in the 11th. Mm -hmm -hmm. So that is interesting because what that can do is many different things. One, it can make it so there is, so okay, so, so most of my clients that have this, they grew up and they doubted their own intelligence or their own thought processes, processes, right? Um, a lot of them were very ahead of their time growing up and had very different types of philosophies than the average. Um, and because of that, due to that, um, you know, there's a level of pain, you know, there's a level of like, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're, let's say you're believing in like all kinds of spiritual stuff when you're young and your family is like super religious or super, you know, against all that. And they just like kind of, it can happen so many different ways. It could also be like the early schooling, but it's in, in, in the 11th house. So it could really have been around friends. So this is as, you know, a lot of people with this, they can sometimes feel like some pain when it comes to groups of people, right? So, um, but also the 11th house represents our greatest ambitions or greatest goals, right? So the fact that you have Jupiter on the midheaven, I forgot to really you know like that's just like the ultimate luck when it comes to um like like that 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 is such an amazing placement like the gods are smiling on you in this lifetime it's a very good karma one um you know you have the planet of kings on your midheaven so um that's just like you know really really good for 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 being able to really expand yourself in your in your dharma in your career you know um, usually, usually people with this, although I've seen like clients who don't have that, um, the parents, you know, were like in a high place in society or like they, they had something, uh, that in, encouraged their, their, ta you know, the, like they, the, the talents were, their ta talents were encouraged by their parents. Um, and it just makes one really able to, you know, be recognized for their talents, like as they, um, as they mature uh, in life, in their career. And a lot of them, um, you know, get lucky with marriage and, you know, they find someone that is a very suitable partner who enhances their life and um, helps them pursue their goals. So it's a very blessed life to have that, right? And when it comes to career, it can be like a guardian angel. Like when one door closes, then a new better one opens up, you know? Um, so it's a great placement. I'm jealous. I'm joking. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's good for leadership too, and be good for being able to inspire the masses. So it's beautiful, but, uh, okay. So the Chiron, there can be pain and difficulty, like letting one oneself go around people, you know? Uh, letting letting oneself go truly truly go um around people and and really just like you know be themselves right it can be it can there, there can just be some difficulty there so um you know and and just like pain maybe maybe like from high school or who knows when around that very thing you know around just letting go and, and maybe there's like some embarrassment that happened or being bullied or something like that around 
the thought, you know, how, how they think. So, um, they're meant to, you know, you're, you're meant to align yourself with, with other wounded healers, which is Chiron is right. Uh, cause pain is experienced in groups, right? So it's good for you to be with other healers, teachers, people who you really connect with on that soul level. And, um, you know, also lacking any air and having Chiron and Gemini, that's another one of your life purposes is to find your voice, your throat chakra, right? Um, there can be fear with communicating with other people. Um, some, some people with this suffered from some type of a communication problem as a child. Maybe they're just really shy, um, which made, you know, sometimes they had like a different learning ability that made early schooling pretty difficult with the 12th house mercury you know that could be the case where you're just like a very very deep 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 thinker early on which made it hard to connect with other people potentially and it could also be that the leo you know the the leo is what's shown but then there's that very sensitive scorpio beneath things right coming off very outgoing and leo but then having, you know, this, this other energy, right? Cause the ascendant is square the moon, which is the ultimate placement for that very thing, right? That very energy of, um, yeah, just difficulty. And the moon is square bars. Yeah. I talked about that. I talked about that, right? Moon square Mars, just like how it can just like just create that temper and that that like yeah, like intolerance and just impatience, irritability, and just like how there's that big need to like learn self control because things can just come, you know, like 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 things can just like like come from like the, you know, from who knows where, you know, from unknown places and just erupt. So that's why like you know having that like creative or athletic um, outlet so important. And I'm looking at these interesting. Hmm. Well, anyways, so Venus, uh, I'll talk about that after. Well, I guess Venus and Leo. Eh. Yeah. So, so with the Chiron, you get the point. It's like learning to trust your voice and when you lack air in your chart i already talked about lacking earth right so the best things you can do is hike get in nature with air you know the breath work is really like the game changer um and just knowing that like you know you need to feel like do like go the extra mile like um to have like a routine and if you're not perfect you're not perfect right like i try my best i have no earth and you know, for me running and listening to electronic music is the best thing ever for me. Right. Do I do it every single day? No, I'm not gonna run every single day, but, um, you know, like not drinking alcohol for me very rarely. Um, you know, things like that don't throw, like some people that like, just don't get like, you have this ultra creativity, right? Sometimes very creative and sensitive people, they lack, you know, in that area of consistency in that area of earth. Right waking up I, I the way i have think i've uh kind of grown up to think of, or i've kind of like taught myself to think about earth is people who can just wake up each day and just be like the same version of themselves like robots not bad i love my earth people but like you know it's a, it's a it's amazing you know like especially if you have like a job like you know like like i literally have days where i i don't want to say i can't get out of bed where like i just can't be in public i just can't be around people you know because my energy or just something is just so, you know, so like, it's just like, I'm so introverted. And then I'll have days where I'm just like super chill. So it's just, that's kind of how, how life is for the non earthy. It's very, it can be very up and down, but you know, we're more creative and uh, fun <laughs> or interesting. Not, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting earth people. I don't want to like, like compare, but you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, Okay, so with your 12th, um, the house repressed energies, like I said, um, you know, also like like doing anything artistic is huge. You know, anything that gets you in touch with other realms, anything spiritual, you know, 
the spiritual relationship with yourself is massive in this chart with the Scorpio moon and the Pluto IC and all this 12th house. Like it's a must, you know, spirituality is a must for you. And like the amount you can gain from it is so crazy in a good way. So then you have Mercury in Cancer. So that means that you communicate in a very emotional way, right? Um, there's an emotional undertone to, to the way you think and you communicate. Um, like uh, you can really, yeah, communicate emotional issues and also family. Um, it makes one, you know, really want to speak with their family, but also like, yeah, have, have deep talks, have deep communications. Um, and, you know, it trines your moon. So, um, you know, that trine with Mercury and moon, that is really, really good for being able to communicate your thoughts and feelings. So it kind of helps make up for that lack of air and it creates a level of charm. Um, and being able to mix your heart, your moon and your mind when you make decisions, but it's in water. So it's going to be more, you know, there, 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 there'd be more of a tendency towards emotionally potential for emotionally led decisions. That's why it's really important to kind of like, um, you know, hold the horses and, and take time before decisions. Cause you do have some squares of Jupiter, like your, your, your Mercury square Jupiter, which can make one, what I call, I have this too. So it's, I call it, um, uh, Superman, Superwoman syndrome, where you can just have all these ideas, all these plans and promise all these things, but not be able to keep the promises. Even if your, your intentions are good. It's like, I'll give you an example from my life. I started a subscription service on IG and I genuinely full heartedly was like, I'm going to make this the best subscription on IG. I started doing the current astrology every single day. And then after a few weeks, I was like, I just can't keep this shit up. I started having one of those days. And then like, now I'm just like, I, I told people like, you know, you don't have to stay signed up if you don't want to, but like, I just cannot be consistent. What was that noise? I just heard the noise. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Okay, it wasn't that. So, um, yeah, basically with Black Moon Lilith conjunct Mercury though, so this is really important. Black Moon Lilith and Cancer. So Black Moon Lilith is your, like where you beat yourself and it's conjunct Venus and Mercury. So with Mercury, right? Um, it can basically black moon Lilith and cancer. We start there. It is your, you at your worst, basically you at your worst. Uh, it's not a planet, so it might not even be something that shows up. It's you when you're vibrating your lowest, right? So in this case, um, back in this case, um, You know, it could be like Black Moon Lilith in Cancer can be run, like, um, you know, playing victim, running away from, you know, not like being afraid of being vulnerable. Um, you know, once like the crab crawling back in the shell, once hurt once, not being willing to trust again, right? Which is also kind of scorpionic, right? And and it, you know, it does try and the the moon which is kind of like a witchy energy and already scorpio moons are very witchy in themselves but you know you're you're really trying to i just said this last video but you're trying to become your own guru in a sense um because this you know um you know black moon lilith and cancer sometimes they can result resort resort to um emotionally manipulative tactics to get their way right um and lacking air as I, as I as i was referring to you know when you lack air you need, you know i said you need you need the the breath work but also it, you know what happens air has to do with communication right so having the chiron in air um it can speak to you know just the need to like learn like the book nonviolent communication is a must read for every human um and just like learning the kind of like base level communication, like, yeah, you do have your, your, so this is one thing actually that's interesting and you, you'll be able to tell me about this. Um, basically your South node 
is in air though. So what I've seen sometimes is people lack an element in their chart, but then because they had their south node in that, in that, in that, in that, in that uh, element, I talk to them and they're like, yeah, I, I'm a good communicator. Like, um, and I'm like, okay, so maybe because maybe it's almost like you pass that element, like you pass that level that life's a video game. You know, you, you be, you're, you're very proficient in the air, you know, being able to understand other people's perspectives, being able to communicate, being able to, yeah, just like really um, be objective in your thoughts and not dogmatic and anything like that and, and flexible um, with, in, in respect to that, right? So it could be that, but, you know, oftentimes, you know, with, with the, with the, with, with a cancer mercury conjunct black middle, it can really make someone able to say the things that hurt people the most. You know, I, 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 I made up the quote that the Scorpio stings and the cancer pinches. So, um, you know, because they know so deeply and you're a Scorpio, you know, so you have both. <laughs> um, but, you know, knowing so, you know, on such a deep level, what, will hurt someone on a deep level, um, you know, if triggered. So that's why that balance is needed, right? That balance between triggering statement, a lot, most people it's triggering statement, initial, like immediate instinctual response, and then it's a tit for tat that I will be blind, but the world will be blind, not the eye. <laughs> um, so, it's about the neutral mind, which comes from like meditation, from yoga, from whatever, you know, to be able to t feel a mindfulness, really like having that in your life. Nico. So, um, yeah, being able to take in that, um, that energy of what someone might say and have that spaciousness inside yourself. Right. So that goes to the whole becoming your own guru thing. And that's, that's, that can be a life changing thing right there. Right. So aside from that, um, so Vesta's in the 12th in Cancer, right? So um, that Vesta in the 12th, I see that with all my clients because it creates a commitment to a spiritual path, the spiritual values, a spiritual way of life. Um, and, you know, in Cancer, that creates a lot of commitment to your family of origin or, or your family that you build, right? So, but, you know, there is that chance also um, like I said before, to withdraw into the shell once hurt or if hurt, like the crab. Um, in terms of work, cancer best, I think they 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 like to work with people who are close to them, you know, who who like they want to have partners with the work they're doing that they have like this close, this deep trust with them. That's a very Scorpio moon thing, too. So, okay, about love stuff a little bit more, like, you know, Venus and Leo, obviously, um, you know, really, really liking. Well, actually, yeah, Venus also conjunct Black Moon Lilith. Let's talk about that. Just like how that, you know, potential um, victim hiding from love stuff that can come out in love, you know, and in relationships. So that kind of, you know, having Black Moon Lilith and Pluto um, in aspect to Venus, um, you know, the more you work on your own self-love and valuing yourself, like that is the game changer, right? Um, so some people with this I've talked to, it's like um, younger people, I can think of too, who kind of put the responsibility on the other people in different situations. So it's really about, you know, even if you were not, if you were letting go of resentments, you know, even if you were the one who's wronged, still seeing your part in it, right? Which is very hard for, for people to do. But letting go of that of pride, not saying you have it. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, Venus and Leo, like I said, they like to have fun. They like to take great pride in their partners. They like to laugh. They tend to value appearances. Not always. Not. not uh, I don't know. I, I feel like Venus, Leo, they just like they, they're, they're, they're they're like very royal. You know. Um, they also like the finer things in life, right? They like the finer things in life. So you have to watch out for spending too much. Um, yeah, and square Pluto too. But like the more self love, the better finances become. And the fact that Jupiter Jupiter is on the mid heaven is very very good. Okay, let's pull open. Have I looked at that? 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 Yeah. So overall, like the love, you know, it's that you know that 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 mix between 
the water, you know, and the fire, like at least ne needing to be heard on all levels and all moods, but then um, also needing a level of fun where you're able to really express your inner child and your inner creativity and be, you know, have that, that kind of like um, soulful experience where you're able to, um, you know, really, really, um, yeah, express yourself. Um, yeah. And, and definitely something that is not flimsy, like something that's serious, you know, something that, that, that is, is the real deal. You know, you know, this isn't the place and system that wants to waste time. Okay. Series is with Uranus the fifth. So, um, you know, it's through creativity, through art, through fun, you know, that's, that's how you look after yourself. That's how you look after others and others are series fifth house attracted to their playfulness. Right. So then series and Sag, um, you know, that, that would make you really want loved ones who are adventurous and who are free within their own souls, you know, and who had their own philosophical views. They're not just copying whatever bullshit, you know? So, you know, definitely feeling cared for when you, um, when you're given space, right? And then your descendants in Aquarius. So at the end of the day, like, you know, that could speak to an unconventional type of relationship, you know, kind of on my point of like, also really want, you know, the need to kind of um, move away from that South Node and Libra towards that North Node Aries. This would really complement that, um, where it would be someone or a relationship that, um, you know, gives you that sense of, of, of real understanding and real, um, you know, real spaciousness, right? All right, let's look at this. Fortuna is on your ascendant. It's not smack on there, but it's close. That's about fame, fortune, or fortune, fortune. So that could be a good one. That could be a very good one. You have Quar on your moon. And what's this? Is that Zubin al Shalami? Yeah. Zubin al Shalami on your moon. That makes you a like someone who can work with herbs and work with magic, work with potions, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty awesome if you ask me so quar is on your what your moon right yeah and then Mika. Mm. Angel on your descendant. So that could, and, and uh, Selena, I mean, Selena. So that just gives you lots of like very beautiful energy uh, in terms of luck with uh, partnerships. But then you have Nemesis on your Venus. So it could also kind of be like love, hate. Um, in that respect. But once again, everything, the most important thing about your relationships is the self-love, going back into the past, doing the death rebirth transformation, all that stuff, really facing the music in a very honest way, and then everything gets transformed. So you have a more, it's like a fourth one in a row that has a more on Chiron. So that means you as a healer are able to have unconditional love and see the maximum potential 
in your clients if you were working in that that type of way. Yeah, Fortuna is actually like kind of smack between Ascendant um, and Sun, but also Ascendant's with Mars. So it's kind of like, you know, could be hit by, well, yeah, all, th all three kind of. So Fortuna could be one. So I don't know. Like that could be, and the fact that you have Midheaven Jupiter is another amazing aspect so um there's chance for something there success an angel on your descendant that's beautiful zubin el shalami on your moon yeah that's some magical that's some real and then you have the ashtray of intuition quar on your moon so that could like literally like um you know it, it really represents like the most primal impulses but also deepest fears but also innermost hopes right but also it can be linked to like painful experiences but it, it really is like about like our spiritual development so it's a very spiritual one. Um, so. Yeah, so one thing about Quar, like, you know, fourth house, like with, with the moon, it's like it, it can make someone really, really want to dig deep in like the family history and figure out like why am I like, like why do I have this, you know, Pluto on the IC? Um, and, it, it, you know, by doing so, you're able, you know, why, like, why do I have all this, all this, this what, like, what the fuck? Um, like, what's what happened to the family, right? Um, so, you know, it can, end up really building kind of a way more secure authentic foundation for you and future generations um so yeah also it's like about like breaking free from you know the confines of conventional thinking and just like have using that creativity to create new, um, you know, new ways of thinking, new paradigms. And um, yeah, yeah. I think it really speaks to like the strong emotional tie to your ancestry and family roots. Right. That's the, what I'm getting out of it. Did you have palace again? Is it a Capricorn? And there's an Aries, right? yeah so it's the scorpio i didn't really talk about that one um yeah so that that just gives you like this real ability to see through people's like bs and facades and really understand like what gets people going on and like motivates them on like a deep deep level very like natural psych psychologist natural bs detector and really good for, um, you know, 
when it comes to strategy, um, really get really like using your ability to get to the, your, your like intuitive spiritual intelligence to get to the bottom of things and, and then be able to strategize with your life um, in that way. And then also in the fourth house, you know, it speaks to that ancestral lineage, right? And how they're like, you can literally, if you can channel that, you can get like such great intuitive knowledge, um, you know, from, from, from the bloodline. So like, you know, learning about like the family history and whatnot could be super, 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 super important. So let's see. So yeah, beautiful reading. I I don't know. I could probably do another one. That be would that be a record five and I, you know one one of them was like a mini reading, but it's still like close to them. Maybe an hour. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, I was gonna look at one thing. Yeah, so really like Juno and Pisces also just like it's the compassionate spiritual partner, right? On the deepest level, that soulmate energy, you know, that deep, deep connection and that like understanding that you don't even have to like say anything. You guys just get it, you know, psychic connection. Um, someone who can really, yeah, give you like that emotional and spiritual nourishment All right. Oh, yeah. I was going to look at what was this Antares? Nothing. Mimic. All right. That is it. Hope you enjoyed. It was a pleasure. Um, let me know about. I literally cannot remember what I told everyone. I think I told you. Um, uh, did I tell you? I don't know. I'm so sorry if I literally said this. I've just done four readings in a row. But basically, this reading, you have the follow-up. I highly suggest adding the current. I would do it for um, a reduction. I'll just do 60 off. I was saying 50 before. I'll do 60 off. Um, and that ends up at, you have to remind me. I'm not giving everyone this type of deal. So... You already have the one hour follow up. We go over all of this um, live. It's not a long wait. You, you know, you take your time, watch this how many times you want to, need to, take notes, all that. And then if you want to add the current, um, we're talking about every single thing in current astrology. I'm talking solar return, the chart of this year, the transits, you know, of like the year plus ahead, the solar arc, the progressions, the progress chart the house ingress, everything. And then I have my two masters in psychology. So yeah, besides that, I also teach astrology one-on-one. -on -one. I have maybe room for one more uh, student. So um, in astro cartography, I do it all. So thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. And I shall talk to you later, my friend. Ch -ch 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 Bye-bye.